LeBron James notched his third straight triple-double on Sunday, this one coming against the Washington Wizards. But before the game, the story was all about how James was voicing a silent protest, in Washington, D.C., no less, by wearing a special version of his shoes. LeBron took to the floor wearing his LeBron 15s, but this player edition had the word, equality, on the back of them. James wore one black shoe and one white shoe. James wore the black versions of this shoe in the Cleveland Cavaliers opener to start the season. Via Twitter LeBron finished the game with 20 points, 15 assists, and 12 rebounds. The Cavaliers beat the Wizards, 10,699. Los Angeles, Los Angeles is spread out. It's diverse. It's urban and suburban. Like all big cities, it can be hard to get a consensus on what direction the ocean is, let alone complex issues. Except love of Kobe Bryant. Monday night Kobe wasn't even suiting up, yet there was a packed Cobland area outside Staples Center filled with games, a DJ, a Ferris wheel, and thousands of people. It was the most people outside the arena since the 2010 NBA Finals. Inside Staples it was the loudest it has been since Kobe's final game, where he dropped 60. Almost everyone was wearing an 8 or 24 jersey. Kobe is still the man in Los Angeles. Monday night the Lakers retired both of Kobe's numbers, 8 and 24, and the fans reveled in the nostalgia. Lakers fans have always loved him, appreciated him, and had his back. It was that way again Monday. We are here to celebrate the greatest ever to wear the purple and gold, said Lakers president Magic Johnson, the other person who could lay claim to that title. He talked about how the nation could use someone like Kobe, someone to bring them together. There will never be another Kobe Bryant. Kobe brought Los Angeles together, but he was divisive most of his career outside the city of Angels. He was a brash young Laker wearing number 8 who paired with Shaquille O'Neal to win three titles, his attitude and extreme confidence turned off some. Then came Colorado and the rape allegations. After that Kobe changed to no. 24, became the, love me or hate me you have to respect me, player who wore his competitiveness on his sleeve, and won two more titles paired with Pau Gasol. Jeannie Buss said the Lakers retired both numbers because in each era of his career he put up Hall of Fame numbers. Which was better, 8 or 24. 8 will have something 24 will never, ever, ever, ever have the ability to grow hair, Bryant joked. It's really tough for me to choose between 8 and 24, but 24 was tougher. And I tend to gravitate toward things that are harder to do. The spotlight was on Kobe one last time and he was philosophical about the honor of seeing his jersey next to Magic, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Jerry West, James Worthy, Shaquille O'Neal, and all the other Lakers greats. It's not about the destination, it's about the journey. Those were Kobe Bryant's words to his three daughters during his jersey retirement. Really, those words were the theme of the night. For example, the halftime ceremony ed by players from both teams started with Kobe's Dear Basketball short animated. It seems fitting that after being a Laker Kobe would take on Los Angeles' other major export, S. And he's doing that well, Dear Basketball has some Oscar buzz. When Kobe spoke, he talked about focusing on legacy in the process. It's not about the jerseys hanging up there for me, it's the jerseys that were hanging up there before, they pushed me, Kobe said. Without them, I wouldn't be here today. Staples Center was filled with those inspirational basketball legends for the night, Jerry West, Bill Russell, Shaquille O'Neal, Allen Iverson, and Kobe's former teammates such as Derek Fisher, Lamar Odom, and even Slava Medvedenko amongst others were all there. Kobe was always about the task at hand, and he kept looking to the future and not his past. What we've done is awesome, but I think what's really important is how our legacy impacts the generation to come. Kobe had said earlier, the jerseys that hang in the rafters now, and how they impacted me, which led to us being here in this moment now. I think that's the true mark of a legacy, how it impacts the next generation. Kobe is a young board for the current generation of players. Recently Stephen Curry reached out to him about how Kobe played through injuries. Others including Luke Walton text him all the time. Kobe's former teammates were telling stories. Walton's may have been the definitive Kobe story. Kobe was one of the most intelligent basketball players I've ever seen, and I could talk to him about what I had seen and what he was seeing, Walton said. I joke, he sees everything, but when the game starts a lot of times he doesn't want to hear it. I'd say, Kobe we talked about this yesterday, if they do this then I'm going to throw the ball over here, and it's like, no. Give me the ball, sure. It was Kobe's team and Kobe's city. For one more night, it still was. Los Angeles, Monday night at Staples Center belonged to Kobe Bryant.
Well, except for the moment when Larry Nance Jr. destroyed Kevin Durant with a dunk at the end of the first half. Durant started his own problem with an ill-advised look-ahead pass that was deflected and stolen, leading to a transition chance the other way. And Nance, who may have had the best dunk of last season on Brooke Lopez, knows how to finish. It's a coach's cliche to say their team threw the game away, but Indiana literally threw the ball and the upset win against the Celtics away in the final seconds Monday night. Indiana was in control of the game late because Victor Oladipo had 30 of his 38 points in the second half, and the Celtics had gone to the strategy of fouling and going for threes on the other end. There's a reason teams go to that strategy. Kyrie Irving hit a couple of big threes, which were traded off with a couple of free throws at the other end, and with nine seconds left the Pacers were up 1-111,110. One, Indiana inbound the ball to Oladipo, who was not instantly fouled and made a quick pass to Boyan Bogdanovich to kill more time. Then Bogdanovich tried the same idea but executed it poorly, throwing a hanging, slow cross-court pass. Terry Rozier from Boston stole the pass, tipping it forward to himself, then racing in for the game-winning layup. Indiana had used its last timeout just before that play to move the ball into the front court, and without a timeout they could not get off a good shot and lost 112,111. Pacers fans can try to take a moral victory from this game, they hung with the top team in the East and should have won. Indiana and Oladipo were for real. But this loss was still a punch to the gut. No, the working title is not, he can't hit the curve, Michael Jordan's short-lived baseball career, 121 AA minor league games where he hit .202, is going to be the focus of a produced by Will Smith, reports the tracking board hat tip hoops hype. The 2017 blacklist was announced this morning, and with it came the news that Will Smith is set to produce a about Michael Jordan's short-lived baseball career. In The Prospect, written by Ben Epstein, Michael Jordan uses a year as a baseball prospect to find himself after his father's death. James R. Jordan Sr. was murdered by two men on the side of the highway in July 1993. In February 1994, four months after the first of his three retirements from the NBA, Michael Jordan signed a minor league contract with the Chicago White Sox. There is potential for a story here. Any good needs drama, and Jordan leaving the sport where he is the best in the world to pursue the dream his father had for him of being a Major League Baseball player has that. Also, Jordan fails at it and ultimately returns to the NBA to dominate again. There is room for a lot of emotion and good story arc. In one season in Birmingham, the AA affiliate of the White Sox, owned by Jerry Reinsdorf, the owner of the Bulls, Jordan hit .202 with three home runs, 51 RBIs, 114 strikeouts and 11 errors. So this is not a hitting clinic. What Jordan thinks of this would be interesting. And there is zero chance they get into the long debunk David Stern suspension for gambling rumor.